Footy talk time for your Wednesday, and what an absolute treat. Coming in from the TIGs, Nathan Broad, who has been a regular. Broadie, welcome. Yes, Dave. It's good to see you. And I love the fact that you've brought in a sidekick today. Yeah, bring your mate to work day. Bring your mate to work day. <laughs> Jaden Shorty's here. Shorty, welcome. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, he, um, he needed someone to talk a bit of shit, so I put my end up. So here you are, mate. I need to start with you because... I felt we had one of the more awkward interviews uh, when I was working for Channel 7. I had to got sent down the loser's rooms and they presented you. And I'm trying to be professional calling you, Jaden, and you're trying to be professional back calling me, Dale. Yeah. <laughs> I did I think like, about that. Well, Dale. Uh, yeah. I was like, okay, Jaden. <laughs> I don't think you've been called Dale in your whole career. Only when I've been I in a, trouble. Yeah, I thought, yeah, he's in a professional environment now. I might call him by his first name and his real name, but um, I actually did think about it after it and I thought, fuck, I don't know. If I've done the right thing, you're in him Dale, but he is a professional man now, so I better go down that path. Isn't it the absolute pits? I feel so bad when I get sent to the loser's rooms and then they send someone out and it's like, ah, oh, you just don't want to do it, do you? <laughs> Abs, Abs, who's a regular on this show, yeah. she got me a beauty on the weekend. So it was um, teed up before the game that a player from Richmond at halftime, up or down, was going to do the little interview at halftime and the club tapped me on the shoulder and said, yeah, no worries, sounds good. <laughs> First quarter had four kicked on me. Second quarter probably had another four kicked on me. <laughs> and I'm looking over my shoulder and then I can see Abs coming towards oh, me. No. And I'm like, oh, don't do it to me, Abs. <laughs> and she's come over for the interview and I've had about eight kicked on me in the first half. So, uh, yeah, it's it's not nice when you're down. That's Just sure. launched yourself up the reverse yeah, Coleman yeah. pretty quickly. <laughs> I need to apologize to you too because last year, I think it was, we had you on the rush hour. Or was it this year yeah, anyway? Yeah, yeah. And I asked you about, well, I got some mail from a source yeah, yes. about the fact that your penis fell off once. <laughs> My beautiful wife. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I asked him the question thinking it might be, oh yeah, no worries. This happened. You went into so much depth that the news ran with it. <laughs> it was in confidential in the Herald Sun. It was, it was on National it? Nine News that your penis fell off. Yeah, I know. It went bloody everywhere. So no, nah, I can joke about it these days. But as we said that day when I was younger, she was embarrassment, but I reckon it's an absolute pisser now. It is yeah. a great story. Back, have you? Uh, <laughs> still got it back. No, it took two inches off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, what about you two? So you're obviously at the Tigers having a good time. You're a bit of a larrikin. Can you spill any dirt on the great man? Yeah, he's, he's the, um, if we're down, we're losing, we're having a bad day. Shorty's like just yap, 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 like a little chihuahua, um, which is awesome. He gets, he gets the group up, but. Um, yeah, there's a few funny things that happened. There was Tinny getting around the club for a bit there. Oh, Not bad, but just the odd, days odd, odd for four years. <laughs> four years. So you took, uh, can I guess? You took the sole responsibility of pissing on everyone's feet? <laughs> no, <laughs> he went the other way. He went the down oh, was the, the fairy that put, he put, put the thongs, thongs on. on, right? So he's wearing thongs in the shower. So you got blokes wearing nothing and he's wearing thongs. So nude and thongs. Yeah, yeah. Nude and thongs. And I don't know who it was. We won't name names, but they weren't copping it. You so. know who it was. I don't. <laughs> I do know who it was to this day still, but they snipped the um the thongs at the front so, so he's put... going to put them on he couldn't put them on <laughs> livid going to bought a new pair new pair snip snip until he would stop wearing them that every pair got snipped <laughs> I, I would have had here for four years really <laughs> i don't know if the showers have been washed in 15 years at the the club did they them. get have a big reno down there or are they still the oh, crap no, they're, they're still, still waiting on still that. waiting on that but i would have had yeah here for four years and then like getting into bed and you're scratching your feet. And I'm, the missus is telling me off. Oh, yeah, stop scratching your feet. I'm like, oh, I can't. And oh, right. uh, yeah, I love the thongs. And I had the Archies as well. Like, they're not the cheap, you know, not cheap thongs. Are they the ones that, they surely got there from Dusty. Yeah, Dusty got us a few pairs. But I, <laughs> I, 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 went, I would have gone through six pairs because the boys are snipping the, um, <laughs> and I had no choice. I was walking in with these floppy old thongs on that they weren't even connected. Uh, but I, um, I managed to get rid of the tinnia. I tried everything. Um. It's gone. Now. But I think Tinny it's gone. gone. Yeah. I think mm. Tinny is clear from the club, which is good. Who have you booted out? Who's been delisted that you think may have been the culprit? Anyone? Or was it Dimmer? Oh, <laughs> oh there's a few. There's a few crookies. Who was the sickest? Coleman Jones. He, he's gone to North. He might've had a bit of Tinny <laughs> in those tinny. toes, I reckon. <laughs> Dan Butler. Dan Butler's feet are no good. He's yeah. at the Saints now, so they're probably dealing with a bit of Tinny, but um, he was real dirty and yeah, those toes, he had hair, hair longer than my hair. <laughs> He, you play against him this weekend. Is there still plenty of chat on the field when you come up against him? Oh, not a heap. Um, I love butts, um, but I just don't want him to kick a goal on me, to be honest. <laughs> um, that's probably the biggest thing. Just don't kick a goal on me and it's all right. But um, no, nah, we have a good laugh and he's a ripper. He's having a good year and um, love seeing him. He's still having a good, yeah, good crack down there. The TIG seems like <clears throat> internally a great place to be. Like good fun. You get treated like adults where some of the other clubs treat you like children. Um, it seems like you've got a really good culture in and around responsibility. Is that fair to say? Yeah, hundred percent. Dimmer's, uh, 
Dimmer's not there anymore. Accountability responsibility was Dimmer's saying that he used to do. Right. Um, so yeah, like you said, treat you like an adult. We don't have any drinking rules. We don't have timeout rules like when you go out clubbing or anything. Um, and it comes back to the player. And then if you disrespect those, um, you'll get pulled aside by the leadership group or or the coaching staff. And um, yeah, we'd like the leadership group to do it first and not get to the coaching staff. But to be honest, touch wood, it doesn't even get to that point. Mm. Um, the boys respect it so well. And we create this environment where we work hard, play hard um, and have a great culture. And it's been like that for a long time now. And yeah, hopefully these younger blokes can keep living this, uh, the culture on, hopefully. Yeah, I can't really recall the last time we had a, probably a, a decent problem out in the piss or someone stuffing up. So, touch I mean, touch, yeah, touch wood. Touch wood. <laughs> no, but that is, weekend, but more yeah. often than not, you give the responsibility to the players and they do well. It's when you have curfews, curfews yeah. that you tend to bugger up. Do you still have footy trips? Are they... Yep. Yeah, yeah Brody, we're, uh, Brody I organise those. So yeah, handed the reins over from Sean Grigg, handed them down to me. So <laughs> the um, passing of the baton. Yeah, passing of the baton. So I'm actually in the process of that now. So we're just getting numbers together. We're up to about 30, I think. So uh, see, this is what um, people don't understand. So the media grabs onto footy trips and goes, ah, you know, what a disgrace. These blokes, you know, mm. I think Essendon did it last year. They had 35 of the whatever on the list and they're blowing up. If you know footy, that's the best part. Oh. That is the best part. That's where you learn about your mates. That's where you build bonds forever. And then you come back. They're the stories that get you through the year. It honestly changes some blokes' careers. Yep. Like it, people will yep. sit at home and go, oh, it's bullshit. How could that happen? But we've got a few young blokes this year now where that footy trip last year, like honestly changed their career. Um, and touch wood, we've never, ever had one thing go wrong. The boys respect everything. Um, and you get together. And if you don't come, you spend the whole next season, change rooms, <laughs> everything. <laughs> Hearing, stories. hearing these stories yeah. you've got no idea about and you, you kind of feel left out. So blokes don't want to feel left out. So, um, I reckon we'll get close to 35, which will be, which will be awesome this year. Are I, you think allowed to... I think Sean Grigg might want to come. He's going to if come. He had the chance, he the chaperone. He'd, 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 yeah, that's fair back, enough. But, uh... The chaperones are always the loosest. Yeah. Well, we, we had of our marriage come on one year. <laughs> he was what the is most... a chaperone? <laughs> yeah. was the most Who signed <laughs> off on that? <laughs> oh, it's a good question because he, he only did a one hit wonder old Evie and he's gone. So we've got the boxing coach clanging out. He comes along and. Um, sorts everyone out. So, but um, yeah, touch wood. So far, so good. <laughs> I yeah. remember playing against uh, Ivan and John Barker, who must have known him from somewhere, said, "Go in the centre bounce and call him Ivan, and he'll blow up." I'm like, <laughs> no, yeah, "Sure, we not." So I walked past. He said, "Good luck, Ivan," and he turned. He stared me down and started following me. Man, I shit myself. <laughs> he hates being he hates, called Ivan. Hates it. Yeah, yeah. Both, still both do that now, do. I reckon. Yeah, yeah, big Ivan Soldo as well. He hates it as really? well. Really? Yeah, oh, they hate it. I thought this reason. was a piss take, like, and I said it, and you could just, I just sensed <laughs> that he turned, and he was just following me as I was walking to half four. I was like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> apologies. You have yeah. travelled together a bit, though. You've done Europe in 2018. Yeah, we did. Yep, 2018. A decent crew, Castagna, Butler, Lambert involved. Yep, there yeah, was a decent crew. Yeah, we, um. Where'd you go? Where'd we go, bro? We started in Croatia. Nice. Dubrovnik. Yeah, Dubrovnik. That was nice. Bit of warm weather. I reckon we went in October. Yeah, yeah. It was we had start. a good year in 18, and then we got knocked out by Collingwood in that prelim. Yeah. Um, so we went October, I reckon it was, yeah, Croatia. Rovnik, Berlin, Kri uh, Amsterdam, London, and that was it, I think. Yeah. Barcelona as well. Barcelona, Barcelona yeah, yeah. 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 It was more of a training camp, to be honest. I was uh, went along with these young whippersnippers and <laughs> um, <laughs> got in there. We're bloody doing the program every day, running <laughs> in Amsterdam. We woke up at 7 a.m. out of our hostel and... There's about 30 blokes having a compression session down in the, down in the lobby. And we've got our runners on and our running shorts and they've just looked at us like, what's wrong with you losers? We're so running through the canals and entrance. Shorty's got his phone out with maps and we're running. There's no roads there and that yeah. obviously no park. So we're running on footpaths and everything. I think Castagna cracked it, didn't he? Yeah. Jace cracked the shits. He didn't want to run, but I was like, mate, we're doing it. Well, like, all those boys had won a flag in 17. So all of them, except me, had won the flag. I didn't right. play in the 17 grand final. And I thought, fuck, I'm not going to let these boys get complacent. Like we're going over there. We're going to stay fit. Like I want to win a flag. Yeah. That's brilliant we got knocked though. Out, knocked out in 18, like to the prelim. And I thought, geez, if, if I'm a chance, like I've got to get these boys, you know, still hungry. So <laughs> I didn't, uh, I didn't let them have much of a holiday. I like, we're in Dubrovnik and we run up these mountains and stuff. And, oh, it wasn't, oh, it wasn't worth it. Like I now, couldn't even you know, see them though. That far. We just got a footy trip. Oh, I was gone. We went, we very... went straight from Thailand. We flew from yeah, yeah, Phuket. To Croatia. Yeah. So the boys were still a bit cooked. And I thought, geez, they've had four days on the piss. Maybe we'll get back into training when we get there. <laughs> I love that you're the responsible one. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, I am. Because, he was then. Yeah. He's, he's, he's um, got a few premierships now, so he's relaxed a little nah, bit. No, well, I'd, I'd live with Kane and he was like psychotic in the way he trained and stuff. And um, he he was all for it as well. Yeah. But he just needed me to, you know, tell the other boys and then we're off to the races. But um, no, nah, that were me, but, me, Butts, Jason. 
Yeah, us three. We, we, yeah. Were, we were only 18, 19 or 19 or something. Brody drafted at 23, a little bit older and... Mature age. A bit yeah. more mature. Mature, Kane, I'm trying to think. Kane was 40. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Feels like, looks like. Yeah. Uh, that's 2018. 2020, you win the granny. Now, have you two made up over Lee Matthews' small issue? No. Because I went through the... <laughs> he, cost, he cost me enormous. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've gone through the vote. So Dusty got 15. Next was Shorty on six. Shedder had four. And then out of nowhere, end broad with two. <laughs> it more votes and touches on the background from. <laughs> I could, apparently, that's got to stay in the books forever. It does apparently have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm wrapped. So when, when my kids are older, they will not be knowing that was a typo. <laughs> so you, you've cost your good mate a second spot. In, and I know it doesn't mean anything. And I certainly know it doesn't mean nothing being second in the Norm Smith voting. But were you flat? No, nah, I wasn't, to be honest. Because, like, mate, Dusty, it, well, I was it, never going to win it. But if I was close to winning it and that happened, I'd be... I'll be oh, going to court, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> nah, Lee, Lee actually apologised to me. Did Brody he? hasn't, but... Um, <laughs> when? When was this? I, th- I think it was that maybe this year when I missed one of the games. I had a radio interview with him and he said, he reckons he voted me, but apparently there was a typo. But um, <laughs> I was happy Brawl got a few votes because it is pretty hard to get like... It was a tough game and it was hard to... Obviously hard to get votes in the Norm Smith medal, but I'm wrapped that Brody got a couple... Um, but if it was close enough and I was <laughs> ever a chance of beating Dustin, which I wasn't, I would have been, um, I would have been, been up, bro, take it to the high courts. Yeah. Brody was stoked. I made his week. Um, made my life. I'm wrapped. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You blokes have Fisher DJing in the hub. Did I say that? Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was wild, weird, wild, but unbelievable. We we're just sitting there and. Who teed that up? Dustin teed it up. Cool. Yeah. Yep. And he just rocked up and, um, as the fisher you see <laughs> on Instagram and the fisher you see live was the fisher that rocked up out of that car. <laughs> yeah, he was it. hot Sunday, from the get go. Sunday morning. Oh yeah, and he was he was, he was, he was charging. Yeah, he was yeah. he was ready to go. Stafford brothers came with him. Um, they're a good mixed term. We had so it was our um, in the lobby was where we would have our breakfast dinner, all that down there, and they'd pushed all the tables aside and said, "Look, you've been so respectful your whole stay here. You can go nuts now down here in this room. Do what you want down here." So he set up his decks oh, like oh. on the wall, and then people were like filming from the back. Yeah. So you, by looking at the footage, you're like, "Jesus, these blokes have got hundreds of people. They're having a festival." <laughs> Unbelievable. But if you actually look, because we were still in like this bubble thing, yeah, so yeah. not many people could come in. I think he had to get approved to come in. <laughs> so we had the playing group for pro- probably another uh, 20 or 30 partners and maybe 20 staff. And that's it. Listening to <laughs> So if you had life. a span to the side, there was just no vacant one, space. Vacant space. Vacant <laughs> space. <laughs> the kitchen. Well, that's brilliant because you had me done. Yeah. I was like, wow, this looks like yeah, it's yeah. heaving. Nah. Um, but it was, it was awesome. We're yeah, in like, Carrara. He wasn't too happy about that. I think he lives in the Goldie. I reckon he's ever been to Carrara. <laughs> yeah. But for good reason. Uh, yeah. There's not much there. I'll tell you what. But no, that was actually a grouse experience. I mean, yeah, it'd be one yeah. of the highlights of my career. Now that he's world famous worldwide, yeah. you wouldn't get that off opportunity very often now. No, and if it wasn't for Dustin, I don't think anyone else would have mm. even been got into his messages, to be honest. <laughs> what about you touched on uh, family? What about your good self, a baby arriving imminently? Yes, on Saturday, she's due, a little baby girl. So, uh, any moment now. So, um, yes. Daisy Broad has a nice name to it. Mm, it's not yeah. so bad. Dale Broad may be even better. <laughs> oh, <okay>. If you're <laughs> speaking yeah, to it, even, even if it's name's you know, Daisy, yeah. you'll be speaking to yeah. the child as Dale. <laughs> Listen here, Dale. <laughs> yeah, what no, very exciting. And your good self, you've got a partner, Matty. Got a partner, yeah. No, no kids on the way yet. Um, engaged? Not engaged either. Pressure no, coming? Yeah, a little bit of pressure, I think. Yeah. I'm feeling. Well, it hasn't but, been very long though. No. Nah. How many years has been only a couple? Yeah, probably 12 years. But, <laughs> yeah. I, I did scroll through Insta because it's always a trap when you use Instagram because a couple of times you oh, you got your partner. It's like, no, 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 we're done. <laughs> as far as you can go back on your Insta, oh, she's yeah. present. She's yeah. probably 2012, yeah. So as as long as Facebook and Instagram's been around, she's been there. So um, I'm probably due, yeah. yeah. But no, nah, no kids yet. Um, my sister just had a baby actually and it's actually made me rethink how hard it really is, you know, when they're so young. <laughs> And I can, I can just hand her back when I'm done yeah. with her, you know, I babysit her the other night and about 6.30, she just started squealing and I, I, I couldn't stop her. None of us couldn't. And I, I forgot that she needed a bottle. So <laughs> called my sister and got her to come pick her up. And <laughs> so you had this baby starving. Oh, she was starving. Yeah, but yeah, I, I didn't realize there was another bottle in the bag and my sister goes, you should just give her a bottle. Ah. Well, am I going to know? Funny, <laughs> funny story about Shorty's family and that we, uh, he had his 150th obviously, which was meant to be a while ago now. But, <laughs> um, and then... <laughs> He, so he's got his mum and his sister and that come up to Brisbane. We're playing the Lions up there at the Gabba and Shorty's forgot to add the buy. 
So he's actually 149. <laughs> so mum's come up for the 150. Yeah. <laughs> but she was 149. It's a week early. <laughs> a week early. So she's ready to celebrate. And, no, then, and then you did and your then finger in there. I didn't have me. <laughs> wait another month. <laughs> no, nah, so well, me, my family friend and me mum and uncles and stuff, they come to the footy every week and they're going, oh, you're 150 being Brisbane. I'm like, oh, beautiful. There you go. That's all right. Mum, she likes to come um, get an away trip in throughout the year and take a few friends and stuff. And I thought, oh, well, they're telling me it's, in Brisbane, or must be. So they've booked their flights, booked the accommodation, and then Maddie, my partner, wanted to come as well. So I thought, shit, I better get on. I'll use some Virgin points and get her up to Brisbane. And I thought, shit, I better check that it's me 150 flight. <laughs> I just got to make sure. And I've, funnily enough, I've typed my name in on Google and I've gone down. I was at like 147 when I was going to book for Maddie, and I thought, the game's in two weeks. That doesn't add up. So I messaged the lady from the club. I said, hey, Sam, I'm just wondering. Have when, you guys docked me again? When would my 150th be? She goes, oh. Well, you're on 147, yeah. so in three weeks, you dick it. So I've gone, shit, Maddie. Mum's going to Brisbane, and it's not me 150th. Oh, she's she's got to pin the I, car. She had to yeah, wait another month. Done the hammy. And, oh, the hammy, yeah. Yeah, then another month later, I've, I finally got there. Very, very good. Hey, hang around. After the break, we'll talk about the Tigs and a big last three rounds of the season. This, of course, is the Footy Talk podcast, your daily dose of footy, the latest news, interviews, and analysis from the world of AFL. You're listening to Footy Talk. If you're listening on Spotify, hit the bell. And if you want to get interactive, we are the People's Podcast. Hit us up on the Instagram, footy talk underscore pod, or at TikTok at, on TikTok at footy talk pod. Boys, the Tigs, you're 13th on the ladder. You're going all right. You're a game and a half out of the eight. Big three weeks to finish off the season. Your destiny's in your own hands. What is the vibe like at the club? Yeah. Yeah. Good, I think. Yeah. It's pretty good. We obviously had a tough review day. Um, I mean, you just said it's going to be some tough vision here to watch, which you have to watch if you're going to grow and get better. So we did that. And then. Geez, that sucks, doesn't it, though? It's hard. Mm. Yeah. You just pray you don't come up. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. I've had about 10 kicked on me for the match here. So I was melting into my chair. But. Um, it was good. Once that meeting had finished, Minnie just really said like, we're done now. Park that. That's been and done. Let's bring the energy and have a great week. Um, and we're not playing till Sunday. So we've got a whole week, a few main trainings, which we haven't had for the last few weeks. So energy has been really good. And, um, yeah, we're excited. Like you said, destiny's in our own hands. It's up to us now. So, um, hopefully get Dustin back and Koch back and, um, Grimes will play. So, mm. um, yeah, I'm excited for the next three weeks. The vibes never really differed to be honest. Like even when Dimmer left, I was, you sort of questioned, geez, how are we going to go and what's the club going to be like? But, um, it's still the same people really. And, um, like all their assistants are the same. Minnie's stepped up and all the boys are yeah, still having fun. But was it weird the when Dimmer left? Cause very rarely, and I've been through the change of coach mm. thing, but usually it's cause they've been result. They've been sacked mm. and it's sort of been, you know, walking on eggshells. It's almost like, geez, just yeah. bite the bullet and get him out, get the cameras away. Yeah. It's probably, the, it was almost the reverse. It was, he's going yeah. all right. What's he doing next minute? Had enough. Yeah. Well, I didn't really think, like, I never really reflected. And then it's like, well, shit, he wasn't going to be forever. So, yeah. you know, then you start to think about it like that. But then also, like, like you just said, the club's, you know, hasn't bought him out, I feel, um, which is a bonus as well. Like, when you think about, you know, getting a new coach, usually you're handing someone the keys and say, geez, we need some, yeah. we need something to be fixed here. But I feel, yeah, the club's still in a great position. We've got great people there and um, just exciting, I suppose, that, yeah, there's another, another coach going to step up and, um, take us on a journey again. And, um, I mean, yeah, like you reflect back to what Dimmer done for us. I mean, there's, there's not much more he could have done for the club. Um, but when he's there, you don't really reflect to be honest until he left. And did he, he ever left. cook you guys sausages? Cause he referred to cooking sausages a thousand different ways, but I know that was a metaphor, but did he actually ever get on the barbecue? We have a sausage sizzle yeah, on Mondays. Yeah. Every Monday we have <laughs> a sausage are? sizzle, but he's not cooking I'm not them. sure he picked up the tongs, but he might've eaten a few. He might've looked at a few. I yeah. think I've seen him eat five one day, but. <laughs> Lucky big mummy doesn't play for your side. Um, what about Minnie McQualter? So he stepped up, he's in the big chair. Apart from probably a quarter on the weekend and one other game, you copped a loss the other week, but not too bad. He seemed like tactically and I guess the buy-in from the group is certainly there for him to maybe maintain that spot as senior coach. Yeah. Well, he's been chucked in the deep end, really. He's just, no one saw Dimmer coming and I, he wouldn't have <laughs> saw it either. And then he's just been chucked in the deep end and handed the reins. And for a bloke that's been in that situation, I think he's handled it unbelievably and give him a whole off season of self-development and coaching. Um, he's only going to get better, but he's been awesome. He has been there for seven years or so. So 
It's not like he's um, new and trying to learn the system. But yeah, the way he's going about his coaching, um, handling losses and wins and um, all that stuff has been unbelievable. And yeah, I'll hopefully he gets a gig. Yeah, definitely. He's been he's been awesome. I mean, he's been there longer than I have. I've been there for nine years. He's been there for 10. Um, he's just a great person. Um, I mean, he's got a young family as well. So that's yeah. probably a challenge in itself to be to be able to step up and do what he's doing, also go home. And he's got three young kids um, and a partner as well. Um, must be difficult. But yeah, the way he shows up every day hasn't differed. Um, and he's always... To be honest, he's always brought the energy as a, as an assistant coach, and then he's just brought that as a senior coach now as well. Um, and him, he and he wants us to be better. Like that's probably the the best thing. He just he's always striving for us to be better, to be a better team, um, better teammates. Um, yeah, not only on the field but off the field as well. So I've really enjoyed having him up there, and um, obviously the club's going to go through a process, and um, they'll decide obviously which way they go. But um, yeah, Minnie, he's, he's been unbelievable, and it, we um. Definitely support him. So, do you think they'll be asking the players for opinions? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the leadership group's putting together something that we'd like to propose to the selection committee. Yeah, um, but yeah, like Shorty said, there'll have to be a process, which is understandable, and we want there to be a process to go forward. But um, the leadership group will be putting together what what we want, um, not and just mini. Is but that a push for mini? A little bit in a yeah. way, yeah. But it's also just a push of like what what traits and what qualities we yeah, think right. a head coach should have, and um, what we see as players we need. Um, cause at the end of the day, if, if someone does come in and upsets the apple cart and we didn't have a say when we had the opportunity, I'd be a little bit disappointed to be honest. Yep. So, um, this is just, yeah, given every opportunity to get a good head coach, if it's not mini, well then they know what we're after and what coach we're after. So yeah, it's exciting time. <laughs> they for probably our... won't ask me. Oh, I won't... There's a lot smarter people than myself. So <laughs> yeah. Leave me out of it. I reckon. <laughs> get to you. Cause you'll give him the straight, honest truth <laughs> yeah, yeah, right yeah, down the middle. Yeah. We... <laughs> mini, I think has got a little bit of the Craig McRae's about him in terms of wasn't the out and out superstar that some of the other players who've been coaches have been. So I think with that comes a bit more understanding and empathy towards role players to how important that is, but also what relationships mean for the team. Is that fair to say? Definitely. Yeah. I think a head coach these days is so much more than being a tactical yeah. game day coach. Um, these days you got to be able to emotionally like mental health space these days, like you got to be able to emotionally support the group, um, read the group, have the energy of the group, obviously be tactical too. Um, and got to be a really good people's person, um, which minis all of those things. So head coach is a tough gig these days. Yeah. Um, you got to be able to do a lot of things in a lot of ways. Um, and I feel like mini does have that. So, um, yeah, so far he's been unbelievable. Yeah. Even think about fly, like we had fly as well. Um, yeah. like fly sort of got me my first game at Richmond and he's just been the same, and, um, ever since he, I've met him and yeah, what to see what he's doing at Collingwood now and just how much fun they're having. Um, just um, unbelievable. He's a ripping person and like mini work with fly. Um, for many years as well. So I think, yeah, just to see the way they're both sort of going about it. And, um, yeah, Craig's, he's, it looks like he's having a great time and he's got them boys firing. So footy looks fun when he's involved at the I mean, minute, yeah. sort of jealous that I'm not still out there. Uh, what about big Dustin? He seems like it was since Koch's 300th, but then the rest of the season, it seems like something sort of ignited in him and he's back to wanting to be his best, but also producing close to that. Yeah. I think he's just. Super competitive as well, Dustin. I mean, he's taken up golf. Like a lot of the boys have oh, shit. taken up golf mm. now. And um, he'd, also, he'd want to be very good very quick. Yeah, he's going to yeah. be a club club breaker. He's going to be one of me. <laughs> he just really wants to learn. He's like buying everything you need, like range finders, <laughs> this and that. He's buying everything. But it, it's been like, we joke about it with him, how much he loves it. But it's honestly changed him. Like he's found something outside of footy now that yeah. gives him a break. And um, yeah, he's just absolutely loving it. And his footy's just, he's unbelievable this season. I think Eith said some stats the other week where he ranks and he's just having a great year. So even just to see how like long he's been so good for, you know, yeah, like, it's ridiculous. AFL footy so hard and he just like, you watch him train and you watch him play. It's like, how you, how have you done this for so long? And you know, and then how, how obviously how much of a superstar he is. Like he can't really do much, go out in the street and stuff. And but then now he's playing golf and absolutely loving it. Um, but yeah, he's just, he's just incredible to be able to like run out there with him and watch what he does and, Similar to Dimmer, man, you don't really reflect when they're with you until they've gone, I suppose, and you'll start to realise, geez, if the impact they've had. But um, yeah, his, his level of abilities is unbelievable and is super. And he trained, like he's one of the last out on the track, trains absolutely hard as anyone out there. And they're working on his craft. Those goals yeah. he kicks where they go left or right, he practices them. They don't just happen. So um, he's a champion of the game and he wants to still be a champion. So I think that 
pride he's got is as strong as ever and he still wants to be the best. That's certainly going to help if you're Andrew McWalter and you've just got a superstar that you can put forward, middle, wherever you want. <laughs> wherever you need him. Who is your best golfer? We've spoken a fair bit about golf. Who is the best golfer at the club? Oh, Jack Rewild off handicap is, but it makes me sick to say that. So we'll go <laughs> he, with it. The good thing about Jack is he doesn't take his golf too serious. So I'm sure he'd be fun to play with. Oh, yeah, God, he's... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Liam Baker's, he's off four now. Is he? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Stripes What's Jack a little off uh, Jack's off one. He was off scratch. Was he? With the three kids, he's gone out to 2.2, I think. Yeah, right. Um, but big, doesn't play much. Big blow it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, big blowout. I'm, I'm yeah. 32. <laughs> <laughs> but Bakes is going good. But when I first got to Richmond, we had four or five golfers and it was grim days. And then the hub, when we went up for COVID, yeah. we, we had a little bit of space to play golf and stuff. And now oh, the golf culture is just getting massive. We've got 20 to 25 golfers, all got official handicaps now. So Did you do a Barn um, Boogle trip? Did I say that? Yeah, we did a King Island trip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How King good is that joint? Oh, unbelievable. It was a great few days. So um, we'll be definitely doing another one next year. Hoping seven mile will be open, but I don't think so. So. Yeah, maybe Barn Burgle, I think. And you've got Sulcombe. So we're just on the way of wrapping up. I'm just getting the points that I haven't to. Sulcombe, is it still the favorite for the Melbourne Cup? Or is it Not the favorite out? anymore. Pushed out a little bit. I think it's about $17 for the Cup at the moment. So about fifth or sixth favorite. But um, yeah, Which is back... good because the favorites don't win, Brooke. No, they don't. Exactly yeah, so... right. Incentivize <laughs> the other year got blown out. So um, yeah, first trial last week, which was good. Another trial coming up, I think, this week. And then have a couple of runs and you get Who's in it? Are you in it? Yeah, I'm, I'm in them. Yeah. So yeah. how many, so have you, who have you got them with? Cause you've got good ones. You've yeah, been yeah. pushed into some real John handy ones. John O'Neill and Ozzy Cahur, they, right. they, um, Get us in here. they're the main guys. Um, but, which is frustrating cause I've owned a shitload of really average horses, like probably below average, a couple <laughs> I could have nearly gone past. <laughs> well, I actually think it's hard to get one that wins to be honest. Like, yeah, but Johnny bought, seemed like Johnny, we're great mates with Johnny and he, you get it, you follow him on Instagram and every single day he's got this winner. Yeah, yeah. Right. Winner, winner. We're, we're getting a couple. <laughs> we Everyone's can't seem to win. <laughs> <laughs> we own it's toenail. Well, that's all right. Yeah, yeah. You own more yeah, than uh, most people. And if it runs in the Melbourne Cup, I look forward to seeing the Nick you boys are in on Cup Day. As I said, we are interactive on the Footy Talk podcast and we've got a couple of questions. Jack from Instagram said, who went the hardest after the premiership? Oh. Which which one? Fisher? Yeah. Which, yeah, which, was, which, yeah. One, which one? Calm down, mate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we get it. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. I reckon maybe Dustin in 2017, there was a pretty good year for him. Yeah, was yeah. It, is, that where he, the is that where he left the car under the thing yeah. for four Was that months? 17, I think? That was 17, yeah, yeah. He left it under the G for a while. Brownlow, Best and Ferris. Oh, yeah. no. He Norm Smith, Norm Premiership. Smith, yeah. That's probably enough to warrant going as hard as you want. But Bakes? Yeah, Bakes has a crack. Gives Bakes, a nudge. Yeah, he loves having having a go. Fisher went pretty hard. I reckon he'll celebrate <laughs> lucky one. <laughs> it's always good when someone who isn't in from the club gets best yeah. on ground. Uh, Stacey's hit us up and she said, the best perk Richmond give you. Or we can elaborate that just uh, to the best perk you're given as a footballer. Oh, we get a lot of time off. Look, no, I think she means free shit. Oh, free shit. Yeah. Oh, Broad gets all that. Um... <laughs> I got a car deal. Well, that's pretty that's handy, pretty mate. <laughs> Northern Motor Group, which is good. So shout out to them. Um, that's pretty. How's handy. that go with Jeep? No, they they ditched us. Well, did they? Yeah, they jumped yeah. off ship. Oh, no mate. more premiership. See you later. <laughs> 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 they only wanted us at our best. Good way you're hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it when we still were with Jeep, which was good. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I've we, had that for a few years now, so that's handy. There you go. Yeah. Well, there's a decent perk, mate. Yeah. We Wait had to um, step out in the real world. You got to buy as well, Dale, which is good. I might have a little deal with Nissan on the side. Uh, Brody, we had New York Minute Burgers unlimited voucher for a whole year. Yeah, and thought this is going to be the best thing ever. I'm going to smash this, and didn't have it once. I reckon. Actually, general pants thirty percent off. Yeah. Oh yeah. I see. I've still got a perk with them that gives me fifty percent off. Oh, I no sh- idea how. Yeah, and it still works. Just and like, they ask me for my email, and then they go, "Oh, discount." Is it fifty percent oh, off? Every fifty percent off marked item as well. Uh, yeah, just price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, days, yeah. that's a, yeah, that's gross. That's a great. Operation. Ours, I think ours lapsed the other day. We got an email. Yeah, I got so, that email. Uh, yeah, Brody would have gone, load it up a <laughs> bit, up. but oh, I forgot to go in. Baby clothes. Have you got any footy, as uh, footy golf hookups? Uh, not really. Taylor made obviously helped out a little bit. You're obviously the, the ambassador for Taylor made, but a bit of a discount there, but no, nah, nothing too much. Rewalt's the Callaway man with Lynch. Um, but yeah, no golf hookups. Clutch so Tommy Lynch gets free golf clubs and he can't hit it 
on the planet. He doesn't know yeah. if he's left-handed or right-handed, <laughs> but he gets a new set of paradigms. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he thinks he's right-handed, but he may be left-handed. <laughs> hey, boys, good chatting to you. We could do this all day, but we do have to wrap up. All the best for the rest of the season. All the best with the new one coming on Saturday or thereabouts over the weekend. Number one babysitter. Yes, yep. I'll get I can hand it back, so I'm happy to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and if it cries, it needs a bottle. This has been the Footy Talk Podcast. Coming up tomorrow, Will Day will join me from the Hawks.